Jesus' name, welcome to Trinity Lutheran Church, because today is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Well, my friends, as we come together on this Ash Wednesday, as we begin this pilgrimage through Lent, it is a delight of ours to be able to come to you in this way. Right, and it's an opportunity for us to, during the season, return to the Lord our God. We recognize through these 40 days, uh, we'll have Lenten worship services beginning with tonight's Ash Wednesday service, um, where we'll be talking about the imposition of ashes and marking this journey that Jesus took for 40 days in the wilderness mm -hmm. that we'll be taking along, recognizing Jesus' journey towards the cross, which will take place on Good Friday. And then the Lenten season will end with Easter Sunday, where we will celebrate Jesus' Easter resurrection. Exactly. But this will be an opportunity for us as we return to the Lord our God to be in rhythm with Jesus each and every day and focusing on our life of faith. So my friends, let us prepare our hearts and minds for this Ash Wednesday service. Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, you hate nothing you have made, and you forgive the sins of all who are penitent. Create in us new and honest hearts, so that truly 
repenting of our sins, we may receive from you, the God of all mercy, full pardon and forgiveness through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Our first reading for this Ash Wednesday service is coming from Joel, chapter 2, verses 1 through 2, and verse 12 through 17. And it reads like this. Blow the trumpet of Z- in Zion. Sound the alarm on my holy mountain. Let all the inhabitants of the land tremble. For the day of the Lord is coming. It is near. A day of darkness and gloom. A day of clouds and thick darkness. Like blackness spread upon the mountains, a great and powerful army comes. There like has never been from of old, nor will be again after them in ages to come. Yet even now, says the Lord, return to me with all your heart, with fasting, with weeping, and with mourning. Render your hearts and not your clothing. Return to the Lord your God, for he is gracious and merciful slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love and relents from punishing. Who knows whether he will not turn and relent and leave a blessing behind him, a grain offering and a drink offering for the Lord your God? Blow the trumpet in Zion, sanctify a fast, call a solemn assembly, gather the people, sanctify the congregation, Assemble the aged, gather the children, even infants at the breast. Let the bridegroom leave his room, and the bride her canopy. Between the vestibule and the altar, let the priests, the ministers of the Lord, weep. Let them say, spare your people, O Lord, and do not make your heritage a mockery, a byword among the nations. Why should it be said among the peoples, where is their God? This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our psalm is coming from Psalm 51, verses 1 through 17, and we'll read responsively by half verse. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your steadfast love. In your great compassion, blot out my offenses. Wash me through and through from my wickedness, and cleanse me from my sin. For I know my offenses, and my sin is ever before me. Against you only have I sinned and done what is evil in your sight. So you are justified when you speak and write in your judgment. Indeed, I was born steeped in wickedness, a sinner from my mother's womb. Indeed, you delight in truth deep within me and would have me know wisdom deep within. Remove my sins with hyssop and I shall be cleansed. Wash me, and I shall be purer than snow. Let me hear joy and gladness, that the body you have broken may rejoice. Hide your face from my sins, and blot out all my wickedness. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from your presence, and take not your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation and sustain me with your bountiful spirit. Let me teach your ways to offenders and sinners shall be restored to you. Rescue me from bloodshed, O God of my salvation, and my tongue shall sing of your righteousness. O Lord, open my lips and my mouth shall proclaim your praise. For you take no delight in sacrifice or I would give it. You are not pleased with burnt offering. The sacrifice of God is a troubled spirit, a troubled and broken heart. O God, you will not despise. The Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to the disciples, Beware of practicing your piety before others in order to be seen by them. For then you have no reward from your Father in heaven. So whenever you give alms, do not sound a trumpet before you, as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets, so that they may be praised by others. Truly I tell you, they have 
received the reward. But when you give alms, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing, so that your alms may be done in secret, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you. Whenever you pray, do not be like the hypocrites, for they love to stand and pray in the synagogues and at the street corners, so that they may be seen by others. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward. But whenever you pray, go into your room and shut the door and pray to your Father who is in secret. And your Father who sees in secret will reward you. Whenever you fast, do not look dismal like hypocrites, for they disfigure their faces so as to show others that they are fasting. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward. But when you fast, put oil on your head and wash your face, so that your fasting may be seen not by others, but by your Father who is in secret. And your Father who sees in secret will reward you. Do not store up for yourself treasures on earth where moth and rust consume and where thieves break in and steal. But store up for yourself treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust consumes and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise to you, O Christ. Christ. Grace and peace to you from our Lord Jesus Christ. The season of Lent, which begins today on Ash Wednesday, is a reminder for all of us to return to the Lord your God, who is gracious and merciful, slow to anger, and abounding in steadfast love. Ash Wednesday, and particularly the ashes, are a reminder for everyone of our mortality and the importance of repentance. Repentance being continue to have faith in God and acknowledge our wrongdoing and sin against God and our neighbors. Throughout our lives, we have this opportunity to return to our Lord, our God, during the season of Lent. Because oftentimes, if you're like me, we can become distracted or lose focus on what's most important. And this season of 40 days mirrors that of Jesus, where he navigated through temptations and distractions in the wilderness connected to the devil. And we are going to mirror that for the next 40 days. We also recognize that we are navigating in the world, the wilderness, distractions, and despair. So I invite all of us during this opportunity and beyond after Easter, after the season of Lent is complete, to continue to return to the Lord your God, who is gracious and merciful, slow to anger, and abounding in steadfast love. Because it's challenging. We recognize sin is out there in the form of of letting our work get too important where we can't get away from it and prioritize and remember our relationship with God. We also recognize that sin can also disrupt our relationship with God and our neighbors, whether that's something like going against the second commandment, or you shall not say the Lord's name in vain. Maybe it's using swear words or using the Lord's name when we're not praising, worshiping, or praying in some type of sacred way. That type of sin can, again, disrupt our relationship with God. And lastly, connected to the third commandment, for example, remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. Oftentimes, we can get consumed with not thinking that we have enough time. There just isn't enough time for us to worship in person here or on Ash Wednesday or virtually at home. There isn't enough time to worship on Sunday in person or worship virtually from home because 
There's so much going on in life. I can remember a particular season in my life where that took place. When I was much younger, I thought that the most three most important things were sports, friends, and my studies. Regarding sports, which I recognize are an important part of our fitness, important part of our leadership development, important part of our competitive nature and staying healthy, I remember at a time in my life where I was playing soccer five days a week. And there wasn't anything that was going to get in my way of going to practice a game or even watching it to see what I can learn and how to get better. Another time in that specific season, I can remember my friends. When I wasn't playing soccer, I wanted to spend time with my friends, go out with my friends, check in with my friends, spend time with my friends, which again has its value and importance, but I let it get in the way of my relationship with God, just like I let sports get in the way of my relationship with God. And this also included studies. I thought it was so important that I studied for this test or I read through this book. I did this homework, spent hours in the library, spent hours in my room just trying to get everything right so that I could get the highest grade possible. Again, there's a time and place for studies and to do well in school, and I absolutely affirm that as I place education very high in my life and the lives of my children, but it can't get in the way of our relationship with God. That is a reality that we all navigate through connected to time. For me, it was sports, my friends, and studies. Maybe for you, it's something else. But I will share with you something that I learned many years later after I navigated through and passed this season in my life that sports will come and go, but your relationship with God is eternal. Friends will come and go, but your relationship with God is eternal. Studies will come and go throughout your life, but your relationship with God is eternal. It's not an either or. We either have sports or nurture our relationship with God or studies or nurture our relationship with God or friends or nurture our relationship with God. It's not either or. It's both and. We have the capacity for both. We have the capacity to do well in sports and nurture our relationship with God. We have the capacity to maintain our friendships and nurture our relationship with God. We have the capacity to do well in our studies and nurture our relationship with God. So take this lesson from me. The importance during the season of Lent and beyond to return to the Lord your God who is gracious and merciful, slow to anger, and abound in steadfast love. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and one another. Most holy and merciful God, we confess to you and to one another and before the whole company of heaven that we have sinned by our fault, by our own fault, and by our own most grievous fault, in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart and mind and strength. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We have not forgiven others as we have been forgiven. Have mercy on us, O God. We have shut our ears to your call to serve as Christ served us. We have not been true to the mind of Christ. We have grieved your Holy Spirit. Have mercy on us, O God. Our past unfaithfulness, the pride, envy, hypocrisy, and apathy 
that have infected our lives, we confess to you. Have mercy on us, O God. Our self-indulgent appetites and ways, and our exploitation of other people, we confess to you. Have mercy on us, O God. Our negligence in prayer and worship, our failure to share the faith that is in us, we confess to you. Have mercy on us, O God. Our neglect of human need and suffering, and our indifference to injustice and cruelty, we confess to you. Have mercy on us, O God. Our false judgments, our uncharitable thoughts toward our neighbors, and our prejudice and contempt toward those who differ from us, we confess to you. Have mercy on us, O God. Our waste and pollution of your creation and our lack of concern for those who come after us, we confess to you. Have mercy on us, O God. Restore us, O God, and let your anger depart from us. Hear us, O God, for your mercy is great. At this time, we will share in the imposition of ashes. Almighty God, you have created us out of the dust of the earth. May these ashes be a sign of our mortality and penitence and reminding us that only by the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ are we given eternal life through the same Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. Remember that you are dust, and to dust you shall return. Pastor Eric, remember that you are dust, and to dust you shall return. Alan, remember that you are dust, and to dust you shall return. Accomplish in us, O God, the work of your salvation that we may show forth your glory in the world. By the cross and the passion of your Son, our Savior, bring us with all your saints to the joy of his resurrection. Almighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive us all our sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen us in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep us in eternal life. Amen. Amen.
sustained by God's abundant mercy. Let us pray for the church, the world, and all of creation. O Lord, our God, you gather your church and you call us to return to you, accompanying us throughout our Lenten pilgrimage, create in us clean hearts, and renew all the baptized to declare your praise. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Renew your creation, O God. Bring rains to the parched places and heal lands affected by changed climate. That all the inhabitants of the earth experience your abundance. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Renew the nations, O God. Give voice to those on the margins and resolve to the world leaders who seek to protect those most vulnerable. Loosen the bonds of injustice and bring an end to all violence, oppression, and persecution. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Renew your people, O God. Respond to those who cry out to you in secret or in seclusion. Equip us with compassion to care for those who experience homelessness, food insecurity, economic hardship, and illness. We pray this day for artist Johnson, Charles Nettisted, Megan Harthoon, Ashley Harthoon, Arla Sellingson, Kathleen Doppler Bruns, Ordine Berg, Dave and Pat Husaby, Gladys Gross, and all others whom we left before you. Merciful God, receive our prayer. O Lord, our God. We give thanks for all your faithful ones of every time and every place. Renew us by the example of their lives of prayer and service. And at the last, bring us with them into your everlasting presence. Merciful God, receive our prayer. We lift our prayers to you, O God, trusting in your steadfast love and your promise to renew your whole creation. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us all embrace each other in Christ's reconciling peace. God's peace, Pastor Eric. Peace be with you, Alan. God's peace be with each of you. At this time, we will give thanks for the offering we receive to proclaim Christ through word and deed here in Pelican Rapids, the state of Minnesota, throughout this country and beyond. Let us pray. Merciful God, we We offer offer with with joy and thanksgiving thanksgiving what you have first given us, ourselves, our our time, and our possessions, signs of your gracious love. Receive them for the sake of him who offered himself for us, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom. And teach us to pray. Our Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. I want Jesus to walk with me. I want Jesus to walk with me all along my pilgrim journey Lord I want Jesus to walk with me in my trials Lord walk with me trials Lord walk with me when my heart is almost 
breaking Lord, I want Jesus To walk with me When I'm in trouble Oh, Lord, walk with me When I'm in trouble Lord, walk with me When my head Is bowed in sorrow Lord, I want Jesus To walk with me I want Jesus Walk with me Yeah, I want Jesus To walk with me All along My pilgrim journey Lord, I want Jesus To walk with me Yeah, I want Jesus to walk with me. My friends, as we come to the close of this service, go forth into the world to serve God with gladness. Be of good courage. Hold fast to that which is good. Render to no one evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted, support the weak, and help the afflicted. Honor all people, love, and serve God, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. Thanks be to God.